let AI work for you. I will show you how to build an application using AI agents that will save you hours of effort. And I'll show you my three easy tips that I use daily to create my AI agent workforce. With this simple three-step process, we're going to create an application where you take a YouTube URL, we will transcribe it, summarize it, and then translate it. You'll be able to use these agents to substantially increase your efficiency in your everyday work. Okay, so to make this happen, we are going to be using the Autogen framework for our AI agents. But first, we need to create the project. So go ahead and open up your IDE. I'm using PyCharm. I'm creating a new project called YouTube Video Summary and using Conda as my environment. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Create. Now let's create it. Let's go ahead and create two files. We're first going to create a .env and then go ahead and create a new Python file. You can just call it main. Okay, there are a few libraries here that we need to install. So you can either run this command or I'll have a requirements.txt for you that you can just install all of them from there. And then the next thing that you'll need is ffmpeg for the audio codec. So if you're on a Mac, you can just do brew install or I'll have the link in the description for Windows users. Now, the last thing we do need before we start coding is you need your API key from OpenAI. So for the first step, we're going to download and extract the audio from a YouTube video. And Andre here has this video for intro to large language models that is a one hour video. So we're going to use this as our video. I'm just going to copy the URL and then I'm just going to create a variable YouTube URL with this URL. Now let's go over the code. We have a YouTube downloader options, which is just a dictionary containing options or settings for the downloader. We want the best audio format, the name for the audio file, and we want to use FFmpeg codec. And then we download the video by setting this option to true and then save the audio to a file and also get the file name of that audio. There was something with saving it locally just by using this file name variable that it didn't like or wouldn't find. So it created a small loop that checks for the directory, a file like the file name, and it, then it works and returns that file. I'm not really sure why that happened, but this fixed it. But now let's go ahead and run this to see what happens. Okay, so it worked. It downloaded and saved that YouTube video and extracted the audio and saved it as a .m4a file. And it's in this format with the title and the extension based on the YouTube downloader options here. Okay, great. That worked exactly how we wanted to. Now we can move on to step two, which is taking that audio file using the Whisper AI model and then transcribing that so we have the text. Well, we initialize the OpenAI client using the API key we stored earlier in the .env file. And then we have this audio segment object. And what that does is it loads the audio file from our directory and converts that to an MP3 format. And then I had this chunking portion. And what this is doing is basically in milliseconds, we're going to be chunking that audio into separate sections for the Whisper model to transcribe. Because especially for this hour long video, it won't have um, has a max value of how many tokens that it can transcribe at once. So if we chunk them out, then give each chunk to the Whisper model, that will work. And so that's what this is going to do here. And this will be about 20 minutes of the video that we can do. Okay, and now we have this for loop and it may look complicated, but it's not that bad. So this enumerate here, so that we have a range from zero to the length of the audio file. And for each step is that they call it is that we're going to be taking about 20 minutes from each of this audio. And then we're going to be transcribing that. Okay, so it's just a for loop to go over as chunks of the audio file. So we take a chunk from the audio file and then we store this chunk as a bytes IO object because OpenAI's API expects the audio file to be provided as a file like object. And then we have the actual transcription part wrapped in a while loop. This is just to give us some uh, up to three attempts to actually transcribe in case something goes wrong at one of the points. But this client.audio.transcriptions.create, this is the request to open AI to transcribe the audio into the input language. And in this case, it's it's the audio is in English. So we're going to be getting the text back in English. And because we're chunking, whenever we transcribe like this 20 minute portion of the audio, they're going to add that to a transcription variable each time that we're done. So it might be like three or four transcriptions. We're going to add them together. So we have the actual text of the whole video. Okay. So now let's go ahead and test this step. I'm going to start from step one and we're going to get the audio from the video, and then we're going to transcribe the whole thing. But it's going to take all of that as chunks and then give us the whole text at the end. Okay, so I enlarge the terminal so you can see what's going on. Again, first step is that we're going to take 
that video, that YouTube URL, and we're going to extract the audio and create a .m4a file. Okay, now it's finishing up the third part. I don't think there'll be a fourth part. I'm gonna go ahead and paste uh, what it prints out into a Google Doc so you can see that transcribed the whole hour long video. Okay, so all I've done is I copy pasted everything and on the, on the side here, there are 16 uh, there are 16 pages worth of this text. So, you know, it did really transcribe the whole thing. Okay, so we took the YouTube video and we were able to extract the audio and transcribe it. Okay, now the last thing here and what we really came here to do for step three, we're gonna summarize and then translate that summarization into another language. Okay, well, before we create the agents, we need to create the configuration. So you create an LLM config, give it a config list, and then we need to set the model and API key. The model can be whatever you want. Most of the time, 3.5 turbo is good enough, but I'm just gonna use the four, the GPT-4.0 model just for this use case, right? Because I just want, I know I wanna use that one. And then for the API key, this is the same thing that we get from our, uh, that we set in our environment variable earlier. Now we have three agents to create. We have a user proxy agent, which just acts as you or me. So I give it a name, a system message, a simple message. Uh, I set the human input mode to never, meaning that I don't wanna be involved with this chat. I just want these agents to do what they're supposed to do. And then uh, we have a termination message, so it knows when to terminate. And then we aren't actually executing any code, so I just set this to false. And now we have two AI agents. One is just an AI agent summarizer, and the other one is the AI agent translator. I didn't really give them any specific system messages. You could, but I don't feel for this that you really need to. And then you just need to give them the LLM config so that they know uh, what model to ask to generate something. Okay, the last thing is the user.initiate chats. Now that's plural, right? Normally you just say chat and you have uh, one agent interact with a group chat or just another singular agent. But this time it's user chats because I wanna first talk to the summarizer then I want that summarizer to give the summarization to the translator, and then the translator will translate that into some language. And in this case, I want it to translate into Dutch. That's what I'm learning right now. So that's what I want to do. Okay, well, the last thing is to test this. So let's go ahead and run this and see what the results are. Okay, so I ran it and we started the new chat. I, I just kind of skipped down to where we start the chat with the auto with the autogen agents. So we started the chat the user to the agent summarizer says, hey, can you summarize? And then the context is the whole 16 pages worth of text. So the agent summarizer is coming back to me and saying, hey, the busy person's intro to large language models. And it looks like this is Markdown. I will say that these agents are really good when they give you Markdown. So if you want to ask for Markdown, it will give you that. I mean, I've hardly had any issues asking for Markdown. I didn't in this particular instance, but it just generally seems to give you Markdown. But you know, it gave me the different points of that text and summarized it right here. And it would be nice to just have a summary. I can give a YouTube URL, which I watch a lot of videos from, give it a YouTube URL and just, hey, give me the summary of what this is trying to say. And then maybe I could look at key points. And then we, then lastly, we start a new chat. So the user is saying to the AI agent translator, can you translate this into Dutch? The context is the summary that we, uh, we just saw. So it gave that. And then the AI agent translator is saying back, well, it translated into Dutch. And then the chat is complete and we're done. Now, one thing I wanna show you is this is gonna be a lot cleaner. I have this separated into classes for you. So let's take a look at the updated code that you'll see whenever you go to download this on my GitHub. So you can see the imports are a little bit simpler for this main uh, Python class. I have three separate classes that I created that each do uh, something different, part, each actually step in the process. So if we scroll down to the main function, which is all you'll be running, all you have to do is put in the URL that you want here and then in the .env file, just make sure you have your open API key. And the first step is we download the YouTube uh, URL, we extract the audio from it, then we transcribe it, and then we take the AI agents and we initiate the chat and then they print that out for us. This will be a lot cleaner. Like I said, this is will be what you'll see on GitHub and you'll be able to use this code to do exactly what we just did. Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna give you my three tips that I use daily and things that I kind of ask myself when I create my AI agent. So let's go ahead and look at that. Okay, so for the first one, I'm gonna talk about the cache seed, which is located inside of your LLF config, which is then given to all of your AI agents so they know what model to choose from and some other settings like the temperature. Well, what the cache seed does is if you don't have this at all, this defaults that number to 41 and it'll save your workflow after you run it into a cache database on your project directory. 
And so if you were to run the same workflow again, it'll just retrieve the chat history and it won't actually make a call to open AI. So you won't be charged any money. However, what you can do is because the default is 41, you can like what I did here, give it 45, 44, 49, 69, 469, whatever you want to do, right? doesn't matter. And then it'll save that as a different folder in the cache database directory. However, what you can also do is set this to none. And what that means is it never saves your workflow into a cache database. And I like to do this, especially for something like this, when I don't want to just keep going back and changing the seed number. If I want something different, you know, you might not always like the summary that you get, but you can at least change here. You don't have to change the seed number and you can always get a different outcome. For tip number two, if you notice while we were doing this, I had a max turns of one with the first chat. So this is when we got the text from the summary and we wanted to ask the agent summarizer to summarize the transcription here. Well, there are times when the agents are talking to each other, they already had the result, but then when they talk to each other again, it's just an empty message and there's nothing there, right? You don't actually need it, it's kind of a waste. Well, what happens here is with the max turns the user is going to initiate the chat with the agent summarizer. Then the agent summarizer is going to return the summarization of the transcription back to the user. And that's one round or one turn. And I know that's all I needed to do. I don't need to do anything else. So I don't care if it wants to say more. I don't want it to. I only want to take that summary. And then I know that with the last message as a summary method, it'll take that and give that exact summary to the agent translator. Okay, so for the last one, this one I see complain being people complaining about the most is whenever they're talking, and especially in a group chat, they're just a bunch of just empty messages. They're thanking each other. It's sometimes it can be an infinite thanking everybody. So what I do, and this really decreases that from happening, is at the end of your system message for the AI agents, put this in when you are done, comma, reply with terminate. And then in the user proxy agent, whenever it sees terminate in the content, then it finishes the chat, right? So you don't need uh, to worry about having this infinite chat and waiting for somebody to say, hey, we're done here, what do we do next? This is a really helpful tip to help you get past that. Okay, this is how you should let AI work for you. Let them take care of all of maybe the manual work or some of the repetition work that you do. I get it that there are some things that you still just kind of want to watch for yourself so you can listen but that's not needed all the time and not everywhere. And this is your first introduction to the Autogen framework, or if you still kind of have some questions about it, I have an Autogen beginner course here that you can watch and it'll teach you so much more about it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next video.